Mike Mensah was the first bodybuilder to ever get a perfect 300 score. In the 1978 Mr. Universe, he won the competition with a perfect score of 300 points. He competed at the same time as bodybuilding legends like Tom Platz, Frank Zane and Arnold Schwarzenegger. And in 1979, he won the heavyweight Mr. Olympia, but lost overall to Frank Zane. Clearly, getting a perfect score of 300 meant this guy had one of the best physiques of all time, considered a perfect physique at the time by the IFBB judges. And he had a very unique training philosophy that we will explore later in this video. He was a very intellectual and intelligent man. He liked to apply scientific principles to his training and experiment to find the absolute best training methods for him and his clients. He used amphetamines as a pre-workout, as a performance enhancer. So this was certainly a very interesting man. He died when he was only 50 years old in 2001 after having a massive influence on Mr. Olympia Dorian Yates who also utilized his high intensity training that Mike Mensah was such a proponent of in order to build his Mr. Olympia physique. So in this video I'll discuss the lessons I learned from his book High Intensity Training the Mike Mensah Way and he starts the book with some like rationale some theory behind his training philosophy. He starts with the idea that in order to grow physically or mentally, we have to challenge and stress the body so that it has something to adapt to. Every person's ability to adapt to stress is highly individual. Some people are gonna be able to adapt much more quickly, like people on steroids. They're gonna be able to recover from workouts far quicker than someone who is natural. And he proposes that this is why high frequency training works for people on steroids because they can overcome the exhaustion and the damage caused by a workout more quickly than a natural bodybuilder can. And so he says that naturals should train less frequently because we need longer to recover from each workout. He also says that since the body is a physical system, there can only really be one valid way that it works. There's only one valid theory of medicine. Human biology is not something that can be debated like philosophy or politics. It's a physical system bound by physical laws and chemistry so there's only one way that it can work. We're still trying to figure out exactly what that is but he says that our training should be guided by this reality, this physical reality of our body by empirical data rather than by wishful thinking and trying to prove our theories correct when they may not hold up in physical reality and he proposes that the best way to build muscle, the one valid theory of bodybuilding is high intensity training. He says that you can either Either train hard or you can train long and you can't do both. If you're training hard your sessions can't last longer than like 45 minutes because you simply can't keep up that level of intensity for a long time. And if your sessions are lasting like two hours, that clearly means you just aren't training hard enough. You're not training to failure or close to your limits because it's simply impossible to train to failure for an extended period of time. Mike says you should train to failure because this will force the muscle to adapt to the stimulus in order to protect itself from future assaults. And in order to maximally stimulate the muscle, you should start in a fully lengthened or stretched position, perform the reps slowly with good form, using a full range of motion and ensure there's resistance at the point of peak contraction like in a leg extension where when your leg is fully contracted there's still resistance against it whereas like in a squat when you're standing up at the top of the movement there's not much tension being put on the muscle itself because you can just kind of stand there for ages it needs to be hard to hold that fully contracted position he also says that in order to reach true muscular failure you have to exhaust all three of the types of contractions in the muscle so that's concentric contraction eccentric and isometric contractions. You need to completely exhaust all three of these contractions using the intensity techniques that we'll talk about in a minute. Also he says you should only rest long enough between sets to catch your breath because we're trying to reach muscular failure not cardiovascular failure and he recommends doing six reps to failure with strict good form and after these six reps then you move on to the intensity techniques to squeeze out more volume in this set. So he talks about several techniques you can use to increase the intensity of your training. One of them is to pre-exhaust the primary movers using isolation exercises before your big compound. So this ensures that when you reach failure on your big compound movement, it's because the primary movers have failed and not the supporting muscles. So for example, you could do chest flies to failure before you do bench press. That means that when you fail on bench press, you know that it's your pecs that have failed and it's not the shoulders and triceps that are limiting you. And when you're pre-exhausting, there needs to be zero rest between the pre-exhaust movement and the subsequent compound movement. So you need to go straight from the flies into the bench press. Another thing you could do is assisted reps. So you complete your six clean full reps 
and then once you can't do any more you have your training partner assist you to get a couple more reps you can also do negatives so have your partner push the weight into the top position and then you slowly lower it under control that's to exhaust the eccentric portion of the movement just don't do negatives on squats because that could seriously be very dangerous you can also do rest pause training which is where you complete your six reps and then you instead of dropping the weight straight away you stand there holding on to the weight still resting for like 10 seconds getting your breath back and then you do one more rep and then you can rest again for another 10 seconds and do one more rep and this is going to allow you to squeeze out a couple more reps in one set despite having reached failure during like the main portion of your set once you've reached failure you can also do partial reps which again is going to allow you to squeeze out a bit more volume from that one set once you can't do any more full range of motion reps and you can also do static holds which is where you hold the weight in the fully contracted position for as long as you can until you, you completely fail and then you lower it down slowly to the bottom position so that is exhausting both the isometric and the eccentric portion of the movement Mike only proposes that you do one set for each exercise. Granted, this is one like long set using all these intensity techniques to extend the set beyond failure. But his point is that too much volume means that there's less resources available for growing the muscle because the body is too busy trying to recover from like the exhaustion caused by the workout. If you do too many sets, it's trying to repair the damage done by excessive volume. So if you do excessive volume, he's saying that there are less resources available to build muscle because the body is just trying to recover from this exhausting workout. He describes overtraining as performing any more exercise than is strictly required. He says you shouldn't work out again until you're fully recovered because if you're still sore, that means you're, you're not fully recovered and any further training is not going to build any more muscle. And he actually advocates leaving four days between workouts to allow for maximum recovery before training again. So now I'll share my thoughts on his training philosophy based on the most recent scientific research to see if it holds up. Mensa says that naturals should train less frequently because they have less ability to recover compared to people on steroids, which is definitely true that people on steroids can recover faster. But from the scientific literature, it's clear that for naturals, the more frequently you train, the more muscle growth you experience. Because for naturals, muscle protein synthesis is only elevated for like 12 to 48 hours after a strength training session. And after 48 hours, no new muscle is really being built. So you have to go and train again in order to spike muscle protein synthesis again and keep muscle building going. Obviously, this is highly individual. Um, some people are going to need to train more often or less often than others. And steroid users can get away with doing bro splits because... The steroids in their system mean that after they work out, muscle protein synthesis is going to be elevated for like up to a week after that one workout. So they can get away with just blasting chest on Monday and then not having to do chest for a whole week because the steroids are going to make sure they're going to keep building muscle in their chest for that whole week. Whereas a natural, they would only be building muscle in the chest for like one or two days. So they're going to have to come back and train it again like two days later. So Mike Mensa's techniques would certainly work very well for someone on steroids because the steroids are going to keep the muscle building for like a whole week or however long he says you should leave between workouts but for naturals if you're waiting longer than like three days before training a muscle again it's just not building any new muscle you have to stimulate it again another part of his training philosophy is training to absolute failure exhausting all contractions of the muscle fiber including negatives and isometrics this causes a lot of damage to the muscle which is certainly going to require a long time to recover from so he is right that if you train in this way using high intensity techniques you're not going to be able to train frequently you're going to have to leave like four or five days between workouts because you're just going to be too sore but the most recent research shows that there is little to no difference between training to absolute failure and training close to failure in terms of hypertrophy. So you can get the same hypertrophy response by training just close to failure rather than going all the way to failure and accumulating all that muscle damage and fatigue, which is gonna mean you can train less often because you're so sore, your muscles are so damaged from training to failure. And it seems clear that the more weekly volume you can do, the more frequently you can train in the week, the more muscle you're gonna build. So if you do 20 sets in a week, you're gonna build much more muscle if you do those sets spread across five days, four sets on each day, as opposed to doing 20 sets all in one day, like in a bro split. It is very clear that spreading the volume out throughout the week and having a higher training frequency builds more muscle, at least in naturals. If you're destroying like your chest on Monday, 
and then you're like so sore for three or four days afterwards and you can't train that means you can only train chest like maybe two or three times a week max and that's going to limit the amount of volume you can get in in the week whereas if you just train close to failure you can train you know four five six times a week with good quality sets where you know you're coming in relatively fresh because you haven't destroyed the muscle like the day before and that's just going to allow you to get more high quality volume in during the week instead of just destroying it on one day and then leaving it for like a week after that being said i do think that his intensity techniques are really useful i think most people are not training nearly hard enough for the first couple of years of my training i don't think i was training hard enough and only recently i've started using these kind of intensity techniques to push towards failure and really discover like what my limits are i had gotten quite comfortable with my like powerlifting style training never really going above like 12 or 15 reps not pushing like to failure and so my muscles had gotten used to the stimulus of just high mechanical tension and not many metabolites building up in the muscle not having much of a pump and not getting damaged that much by going to failure and doing eccentrics and stuff. And if your muscle has gotten comfortable and it's gotten used to the stimulus being put on it, it has no reason to adapt and grow. So you have to switch up the stimulus. Like the gym bros say, you have to shock the muscle or confuse the muscle. You need to give the muscle something to adapt to. And for a lot of people, that's gonna be like training harder than they're used to. So earlier on, I was talking about why training to failure isn't necessarily a good thing but in some degree it can certainly be useful. You need to train to failure in order to discover uh, where failure is for you, so then you can train close to failure next time. Mike Mentz's training is usually portrayed as like one set, but really there is a lot of volume in that one set because he uses techniques like drop sets and forced reps, partial reps, all that to squeeze more volume into this one big set. And this ends up being a lot more than just one set of six reps to failure because he's getting many more reps than that, much more volume squeezed into that set. But despite this one huge set and all the extra volume squeezed in, this is still going to be less productive volume than three or more sets close to failure. And three sets close to failure is probably going to be just as effective as this one big set while causing less fatigue because it's causing less muscle damage. So alternatively, you could do two normal straight sets close to failure and then finish the third set by doing these high intensity techniques, pushing like to failure and beyond. And this way you could accumulate more volume, which seems to be one of the main drivers of hypertrophy while still getting the benefits of high intensity training and training to failure. I'll just end with a couple of lessons on mindset from Mike Mentz's book. He describes being in the gym as being at war. Nothing else really matters in that moment. And gym is a really good way to channel your like violent instincts into something beneficial and productive. He said that reading Nietzsche before workouts used to make him feel powerful and get him hyped up for his workouts. Him and his brother used to read Nietzsche to each other before their workouts to get ready to get themselves in like the appropriate mindset for destroying this high intensity workout they're about to do he says in order to be an olympian you need to transcend limits focus on the positives set clear short and long-term goals and utilize visualization so clearly visualize a successful workout before every time you train and i'll just end with one of his quotes man's proper stature is not one of mediocrity failure frustration or defeat but one of achievement, strength, and nobility. In short, man can and ought to be a hero. If you've seen my video on Toji's physique and you're interested in the complete guide to achieving Toji Fushiguro's physique, including a physique analysis and weightlifting or calisthenics training programs tailored to suit your needs and efficiently maximize muscle growth, check out the link at the top of the description. Thank you for watching. If you know any more about Mike Mensa or high intensity training, let me know in the comments and share your knowledge with everyone. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video.